Okay, as the bass, as the buckets keep going around, I'd like to introduce um, con someone who really doesn't need an introduction, but Country Joe McDonald straddles the two polar events of the 1960s, Woodstock and the Vietnam War. After 48 albums and more than four decades in the public eye as a folk singer, Country Joe McDonald qualifies as one of the best known names of the 60s rock era, still performing. Woo! Country Joe. And it's five, six, seven, open up pearly gates. Yeah, there ain't no time to wonder why we're all gonna die. Come on, Wall Street, don't be slow. Man, this war a go go. There's plenty good money to be made. Supply the army with the tools of the trade. Just up afraid, they drop the bomb. They drop it on the Viet Cong. And it's one, two, three. What are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't know that. Let's stop this Vietnam. And it's five, six, seven. Open up the We are gathered here because today preparations for nuclear war at Livermore Lab, right behind that fence, are ongoing. I'm going to offer you three examples. 85% of the budget request for this facility is for nuclear weapons activities. Many of you are avid newspaper readers and radio listeners and news junkies. And you have seen press releases and heard press releases from Livermore Lab about the science. Do you know how much of the budget request is for science? This is the government's budget request, 4%. We are here today to change those numbers. 85%, nearly a billion dollars each year for nuclear weapons activities is obscene, immoral, and robs us of money needed for human needs and civilian science. My second example for you today is right now, as the weapon scientists are coming to work, as they will still try to come to work when we're at the West Gate, they are developing a modified warhead for a new long-range standoff weapon, or LRSO. What does that mean? This would be a radar evading weapon that would hug the terrain after it was launched. And the word standoff in it means the pilot would be able to stand off from the target 3,000 miles or more and launch it, radar evading, arrive unannounced on a population going through their daily rituals as we are every day here. The new LRSO and its delivery vehicle are estimated to cost perhaps $20 billion. Again, this is theft from those who are hungry. This is theft from our children. We are here to stop it. The third example I want to give you is the National Ignition Facility. Many of you have heard me talk about the National Ignition Facility, or NIF, before. This is Livermore Lab's biggest nuclear weapon design facility. Nearly 20 years and eight and a half billion dollars have been spent on NIF at Livermore Lab, and attempts to achieve fusion ignition in NIF have failed. This year, on this historic 70th anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Livermore Lab made a decision to begin using plutonium 
in the National Ignition Facility. This is not only a local hazard to workers, to those of us like me who live here, and to the environment, but this is a horrible proliferation risk as well. We are here to say new bomb design and use of plutonium in the NIF is unacceptable to us. And thank you for being here to say that today. I also want to remind us quickly that nuclear weapons have taken center stage on the borderlands of Europe, in South Asia, in the Pacific. There are a number of nuclear flashpoints the possibility of a nuclear weapon being used again is very present and will always be present with us until the very last one is eliminated from the world. Whether the next nuclear exchange is initiated by accident, by miscalculation, or by madness, the radiation and the soot from the fires will know no boundaries. The U.S. is poised to spend a trillion dollars over the next 30 years modernizing its nuclear bomb. As we're here today, plans are being made for nuclear weapons for the next 70 years. That, fundamentally, my friends, is what we need to change. On this 70th anniversary date, we demand our government redirect funds from nuclear weapons to our schools, to our cities, to our libraries, to all of the human needs and programs of social uplift that are so devastated of funds right now. Your being here is so important and from the bottom of my heart, I welcome and I thank you. Atomic bombs massacred over a hundred thousand people. The total of two hundred thousand people uh, were died in that year. Over six hundred thousand people have died up to this day due to two atomic bombs. Most of deaths, these deaths were civilians. People uh, didn't die instantly. They uh, suffered greatly, like uh, burns and disfiguration, uh, norm, uh, blood abnormality, and they took a last breath. The suffering is unimaginable. And uh, even now, after 70 years later, this after effect remains, such as leukemia, airborne cataract, cancers, birth defect, mental retardation. And the fear of birth defect in children will last for generations. When people needed to seek the truth to save their victims and protest the government policies, the government created the secrecy law, which has passed on the December 2013. This secrecy law is so vague that the bureaucrats and politician, politician can design it, the state secret, to their liking. People seeking the state uh, secret and the disclose the secret uh, can be punished with five, up to five years in prison. Then came reinterpretation of our pacifist uh, constitution. Uh, these bills have already passed approved in the lower parliament and will pass the upper parliament in this summer. The law allow our self-defense force go outside to join the U.S. war. Japan seems as if want to be prosperous by the war. So Henoko base has been pushed to be built and Okinawa people's sufferings never end. The uh, law has been created and changed to go forward Japanese militarism. Japan can export war weapons now. Japan can send the military to outside to kill people. Now Japan needs a nuclear weapons. Japan has 48 tons of plutonium.
These can be created into 6,000 nuclear weapons. Japan has been keeping the nuclear power plants for the potential of creating nuclear power plant, uh, pot creating the nuclear weapons and to make the threat to the neighboring countries. This is the reason the Japanese government never give up nuclear power plant. Even after the Fukushima disaster, they have pushed very hard to restart the next plant. So the Sendai nuclear power plant will restart actually coming 11th, uh, five days from today. Even though it is located at a huge, I mean nearby at a huge active volcano. And the next and the next uh, nuclear power plant are lined up for restarting. What can we do? We must keep on protesting. We must never give up. Because, because the spirit of Hiroshima and Nagasaki victims are here now and are wishing the abolition of a nuclear power plant. Thank you. It's my honor to present Takashi Tanamori, whose life experience exemplifies, demonstrates the Japanese proverb, Nana Kurobi Yaoki, which means fall down seven times, stand up eight. Thank you very much. View from an anti nuke going through the 70 years of a Hiroshima experience brought me to learn how to forgive. Greatest way to avenge your enemy is by learning to forgive. And I want you to know I have discovered the great, great peace by learning to forgive. So I reconcile with the history. I reconcile with the Americans. I reconcile with the Hiroshima. But above all, I have been able to reconcile with my heart by learning to forgive. Thank you. It's my great pleasure now to um, bring before you one of the greatest heroes in the history of the United States, someone who um, many of you well know. Uh, Daniel Ellsberg is best known as the courageous whistleblower who published the Pentagon Papers. And he was sentenced to 109 years in prison before his conviction was overturned. Earlier, Ellsberg served as a strategic analyst at the Rand Corporation and consultant to the Defense Department on the White House, uh, and the White House, specializing in problems of the command and control of nuclear weapons, nuclear war plans, and crisis decision making. In addition to becoming a prominent opponent of the Vietnam War, Ellsberg has been a leading advocate for the complete elimination of nuclear weapons. His forthcoming memoir is tentatively titled America's Doomsday Machine, Confessions of a Nuclear War Planner. Daniel Ellsberg. Jackie Gabasso uh, just reminded me that we first met, I and she, we've been working together for a third of a century. We first met out here in this lot in 1979, that's 36 years ago. So uh, we're still at it. They're still at it, so we're still at it. Uh, we got arrested that day. I expect to get arrested today. And it's a good crowd, it looks like, to get arrested with. I hope a lot of you will, will be with us. The fact is that right now, 70 years later, right now, if you read the papers about Ukraine, you're looking at threats and possibilities and deployments of Russian and U.S. troops in the vicinity of Ukraine that confronts us with the possibility of fighting between Russians and U.S. troops in a way that has never happened, but has never been this close since the Cuban Missile Crisis 52 years ago, 53 years ago. 
We're facing, I think, and now this time, both sides, then it was us. This side's both Putin and the U.S. are talking about the possible use, first use of nuclear weapons. And for the last 25 years, we've now known nuclear weapons used between the U.S. and Russia will cause from the smoke of the burning cities on the target plans that I worked on and are worked on in Russia, the smoke will go be lofted to the stratosphere as in Hiroshima by a higher firestorm, but simultaneously thousands of cities, pillars of smoke that will join around the globe, blot out the sunlight sufficiently to kill harvests around the world and condemn nearly the entire population of the world to death, the doomsday machine, the end. We've known that not at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis, but for the last 25 years. And yet these threats go on. The threats go on, and they are threats of ending nearly all life. And I'm being very precise here. Uh, physicists like Alan Robux says probably <clears throat> there will be some humans, we're so adaptable, left somewhere eating fish and mollusks in an island somewhere. There may be a million, maybe 10 million. Humans won't be totally extinct. Only the other 7 billion will be, along with the primates. And that's what they're talking about right now. We're at greater danger. That's outrageous. Is it worth keeping, doing everything we can <clears throat> to prolong the period before this human outrageous folly and criminality result in uh, this kind of war. I'll bet that all over the world today, or all over this country, there are groups like this. Some smaller, I've been at smaller, and some larger. If it hadn't been for groups like this, we would have had the nuclear war earlier, as well as testing in the atmosphere and otherwise. Uh, there's a whole story on that. In 1969, it was the moratorium where people like this all over the country were gathered on October 15th, 1969, and led Nixon to abort his threats of initiating nuclear war in Vietnam. And we didn't know he was making those threats. We didn't know he was having that attitude. Once, just before the May Day uh, event, where we all got arrested in May Day in Washington in 1971, just before the Pentagon Papers. The movie, the movie Little, Bo Little Man with Dustin Hoffman had just come out, and I remember saying to people at this rally before we went to Washington, the Sioux have a saying which is repeated several times in the movie. Come brothers, this is a good day to die. And I said, it's never really a good day to die, but this is a good day to get arrested. And that's today. Thank you for being here. I think we want to uh, recognize the 40 groups who are responsible for putting this on today. If you get your program, you'll see that they're all listed there in the program <clears throat> in alphabetical order. It goes from the American Friends Service Committee to the Women's International League for Peace, and also including Western States Legal Foundation, for which I'm a, a proud board member. So let's thank all of those organizations for their work. Now, my good friend and the director of Western States Legal Foundation, Jackie Cabasso. I have to take a picture of you from the stage. <laughs> Smile! <laughs> Say no nukes! No All right. So I've uh, s participated and spoken in many different capacities at these rallies over the years, but this is the first time that I've been asked to give the call to action. So I just want to briefly reflect on why we're here and where we are and this here is the direct descendant of the Manhattan Project. In appealing to the 1982 UN se uh, Special Session on Disarmament, the mayor of Hiroshima, Takashi Araki, said, 
Hiroshima is not merely a witness of history. Hiroshima is an endless warning for the future of humankind. If Hiroshima is ever forgotten, it is evident that the mistake will be repeated and bring human history to an end. The mayor of Nagasaki, Hitoshi Motoshima, added, Nagasaki has to be forever the last city in the world bombed by nuclear weapons. That is why we're here. Shortly, we will process to the west gate of the lab, it's about a quarter of a mile, led by our Buddhist drummers. Upon arrival at the gate, we will participate in a traditional Japanese bond dance led by Chizu Hamada, who you heard speak earlier, where we will invite our ancestors, including the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, to join us. Following the dance, sirens will sound in, in remembrance of the victims of the second atomic bomb dropped by the United States on Nagasaki on August 9th, 1945. The sirens will signal a die-in. Those who so choose may lie down and be outlined in chalk in the gate area. Some, excuse me, some may choose to get up and leave their outline when the order is given to disperse. Others may choose to stay in position and risk arrest. And please do join Dan Ellsberg and me in risking arrest. Huh. Oh, I don't <laughs> want to miss the guy in. Well, what I'm here today is um because we're protesting against nuclear weapons at the um, Livermore lab. And I feel like it's sad because then everybody dies and there's such powerful weapons and the U.S. is spending so much money to make them. And I want them to stop. I'm trying to get our country to stop breaking the law. There, this is where I think 85% of the work that goes on at Livermore lab is geared toward uh, creating weapons um, to kill people and uh, I'd much rather see it go for things that keep life. Um, it, it's just criminal what goes on here. So I'm laying here trying to imagine what it was like on August 6, 1945 in Hiroshima. It is actually beyond my human comprehension that this facility I'm lying in front of is continuing to modernize and improve these most horrific weapons of war. It's, it's unconscionable. It cannot continue. And for whatever this small symbolic act is worth, I'm putting my body on the line. It's a moment to meditate and think and contemplate and also to renew my spirits to keep fighting this building of destruction. This um, nuclear war stuff and creation of nuclear weapons has got to stop. It's insanity. Something is going to go wrong, always something does, and when it goes wrong, it's going to really go wrong. So we have to stop it. I've never been arrested before. Yeah, so this is a new thing. I figure, I guess I'm old enough to try something new, huh? We can't go on like this. Um, even though it's symbolic, I feel like I have grandchildren and there are many children all over the world that deserve a future. We hope that the 30-year program of modernization of nuclear weapons doesn't lead us to have to come back here after a hundred years after Hiroshima. And we just really hope that we could start engaging younger people to come out and make this a really mass movement to finally stop the era of nuclear weapons once and for all. I'm here today because I love my world and so many of us are allowing the militarists 
and the scientists whom they have bought to prepare us for the ending of life on Earth. And that's what nuclear weapons represent and our war plans. Our war plans made and people are profiting from them in arms industry and it's directing our diplomats. We as people who love life, even if we pretend that we are, in, and we are being in solidarity with the dead, it's time for us more and more every day now to stop the madness that is our nuclear arms race. We shall not be moved just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. Do you think actions like this have any effect? Well, I know they do because they had an effect on me. It was people who went to prison to resist the draft nonviolently are the people who put it into my head to ask myself the question, what can I do to help end the war now that I'm ready to go to jail? So I wouldn't have given the Pentagon Papers, uh, I wouldn't have thought of it without actions like this. So I felt the power of my own life. I think that what it means today is here we're here in this plant, 70 years after Hiroshima, they're designing nuclear weapons. Uh, 60 years after the H-bomb was invented, they're still designing more hydrogen weapons, thermonuclear weapons, that can end life on Earth, essentially. So here on this day, Hiroshima Day, it just seems to me right that there should be no business as usual in this bomb factory, this bomb designing plant. Uh, we want to say, if you're going to go on designing bombs today on Hiroshima Day, you have to do it over our bodies. We withdraw our consent. We're being arrested, but they're the ones committing the crimes. I'm very gratified um, by the turnout. I counted about 300 participants, possibly more with late arrivals. Um, I don't think we have achieved the global abolition of nuclear weapons yet today, but I honestly believe that we have taken a step in that direction today. Um, that by the action and by the wonderful spirit of the actionists, we've taken one more step toward a safe and sane nuclear weapons free world.